under these unassuming fields lie one of the most important burial sites in Yorkshire. I'm in Loftus near Redcar. This site, which has been of ritual and religious significance for thousands of years, has helped change the way we think of the early medieval period and the story of Christianity and paganism in Britain. This is England's lost Anglo-Saxon princess. This site has been meaningful to people for thousands of years and to understand the significance of why she was buried here, we need to go back even further in time. Because she wasn't just buried anywhere in a random field, this place had been chosen specifically. Like Almondborough Hill Fort, the earliest signs of activity here date from the Neolithic period around 3300 BC, when a burial mound or cairn was discovered. This wasn't just an ordinary grave, it was clearly for someone important. There were other Neolithic buildings too, including a house which might just be the oldest house in Yorkshire, dating from around 3900 to 3700 BC, making it over 6000 years old, older in fact than Stonehenge. Just over a thousand years later, in around 2200 BC, in what we call the Bronze Age, a very unusual structure was built. It was so unusual, in fact, that the archaeologists who found it called it the Wasit, meaning, what is it? All that remains now are the post holes, but this would have been a circular enclosure about 8 metres in diameter of 56 upright wooden posts with a raised section in the centre. As you can see, there's some deliberate gaps between the posts, suggesting that maybe these were where people entered during rituals. Later on, in the Iron Age, there were more settlements, and then the Romans came and left behind a villa, and so we see that this site was like a sandwich, continually built on over time, with each layer representing a different time and community. Every generation of people who lived and built here felt a sense of continuity with the past. They recognised a ritual importance that this place had. Let's talk about death, because we're all going to die and hopefully you've accepted your inevitable mortality, but if not, it might be something to work on. Anyway, it's important to recognise how important death and burial is culturally. Think of how during the pandemic it was painful for a lot of friends and families when they couldn't bury and grieve for their loved ones in the way that they wanted to. And the way that we bury the dead tells us a lot about who we are. So this is where the princess comes in. The aptly named archaeologist Steve Sherlock and his team, who have spent 40 years working on the site, found a series of graves. The acidity of the soil had decomposed the bones, and so the only clues as to who was buried came from the objects which were left. And from these came a surprising discovery. These graves were a lot newer than expected. They were early medieval. The very deliberate arrangement of the graves, with a gap where people can enter and walk around the perimeter, strongly suggests that this cemetery was planned in advance, and that the idea of ritually visiting was very important. And by burying these people so close to these older sites, they wanted to form a deliberate link with the past, to continue the usage of the site as a place where the dead are ritually buried and remembered. But the most interesting thing for me is what this cemetery tells us about the Christianisation of Britain. 109 graves were found, each with the head pointed east. This is a very common feature in Christian buildings. Almost all traditional churches have their altars facing east towards Jerusalem. Could this be an early example of a Christian burial site? Right at the centre of this cemetery, on a raised mound, was a bed burial. Clearly, the people who created this cemetery wanted this particular person to be seen as the focal point. This is the northernmost bed burial found in England, and the person who occupied it was very important. Inside this grave was found beautiful handmade jewellery, now held at Kirkleathan Museum. It suggested that this person was a member of royalty or nobility, and a woman. This jewellery is very similar to other pieces found elsewhere, such as in the famous Sutton Hoo ship burial and the gargantuan Staffordshire hoard, the latter of which had a whopping three and a half thousand pieces of similar jewellery. 
but the scallop-shaped pendant is so unique that there are no other known artefacts with this design. It must have been made by one of the most skilled craftsmen in the land. And so whoever this woman was, she must have been really rich and really important to be able to wear it. Although we don't know where the gemstones in this particular pendant came from, we know that similar jewellery from the Staffordshire Hoard, for example, had gemstones from Eastern Europe and India, showing that people at this time had mastered the art of international trade. But to me, the far more interesting thing about this pendant is its shape. A scallop. Because a scallop is another Christian symbol, famously of pilgrimage. And so we see another clue which points towards this being a Christian community. But the story gets more interesting. Because people don't just wake up one morning and realise that they've been following the wrong religion, that, gosh, all this time I've been worshipping Thor when really it was Jesus all along. And some of the artefacts from the site show that the people living at this time were in a period of transition. For example, in another grave, two first century coins and a string of beads were found. These coins have galloping horses on them and were placed to make it look as though a horse was galloping across this person's neck. But on the other side of the coins were crosses. Perhaps these are hidden Christian symbols. We find something similar when we look at a belt buckle dug up at Eccles. Around the edges we see snakes, a clearly pagan symbol, but in the centre is a fish, a classic Christian symbol. So the maker of this belt buckle has decided to combine both Christian and pagan symbols. Notice also the scallop shell at the edge. And so what we begin to see is that people were almost hedging their bets by adopting both pagan and Christian symbols. I don't want to get a copyright strike, but it's like that scene from The Mummy where the guy has all those religious necklaces from different religions and he tries out each one until he finds the one that works. It's like that, basically. Christianity was widespread in Britain during the Roman Empire, but it seems that with its subsequent collapse and the, depending on which view you take, invasion or migration of various groups from Northern Europe, Christianity was largely forgotten and replaced by paganism. And so, in 596, Pope Gregory the Great sent a group of missionaries to Britain to convert the populace back to Christianity. Paulinus of York and a deacon named James went to the north, where they converted the Northumbrian royal family in 627, and so the process of conversion was a long and slow one. Hartlepool Abbey was founded in 640, Whitby Abbey in 657. These were the coastline religious communities which might have been known to, and even had influence on, the people of Loftus. So what have we learned about this princess and the community who buried her? Well, we know that she was clearly very rich and very important, likely a member of the nobility or even royalty. We know that she was seen as so rich and important that she wore, and was buried with, jewellery made by one of the finest craftsmen of the time, using materials likely sourced from far away. We know that her community was in a period of great change. Some were adopting Christian symbols whilst retaining pagan ones, and the layout of the cemetery suggests that it was arranged in a deliberately Christian fashion. The people who created this cemetery, much like the Bronze Age and Neolithic communities before them, wanted to guarantee their loved ones safe passage into the afterlife, and by looking at how they hoped to achieve this, we can learn a lot about the story of faith in 7th century Britain.